Did you know that you might have poop on your phone? Find out about this and more at 11. Cooler Master V-Series Semi-Modular Power Supplies feature 80 plus gold efficiency and their gold guarantee 5 year warranty. Click now to learn more. So most people don't know that they have poop on their phones, including me until recently. I knew that fecal matter flying out of your toilet when you flushed it was kind of an issue, but I didn't quite realize how bad it actually was. Luckily, someone at the Wellcome Trust did know about this. The Wellcome Trust's aim is to, and I quote, achieve extraordinary improvements in health by supporting the brightest minds. And essentially, they're an independent charity that funds research to improve human and animal health. They accomplish this by being one of the world's largest providers of non-governmental funding, and they funded a study that found that one in six phones are contaminated by fecal matter, which wouldn't be a problem if you could wash your phone the same way you wash dishes. Enter the phone soap charger, a proper cleaning solution for your phone. Phone soap claims, and I quote, that there is a lot of ways to sanitize your phone, such as with soap, bleach, or fire, the first two will very possibly damage your phone, and however awesome cleansing your phone with fire may sound, don't do it. Although that being said, having a fire cleansing blowtorch for your phone would be pretty metal. Ah, back to reality. So, how does it work? Well, the phone soap utilizes ultraviolet germification irradiation, which is already used in a variety of applications, including food, air, and water purification. Uh, the specific ultraviolet light required is called UVC, which is short wavelength ultraviolet radiation. And the phone soap uses two UVC lamps, which are positioned above and below the phone while it is inside the phone soap charger. All of this sounds great because after all the research I've been doing, I'd rather not have this acne causing disease spreading crap pun intended, on my phone because that thing goes against my face, man. Some amount of germs can be good for your immune system, but the amount that is on your phone could be a little bit too much. Now that we know how it works, let's do a quick tour of the unit. In terms of build quality, well, it's a plastic box. It's totally unexceptional, but it also isn't horrible. I would have liked to see more considering you're paying $60 for what is essentially two UV lamps, a USB plug, and some plastic housing around it, but if it performs its function, then I guess that's all right. Speaking of USB plug, you can plug in any USB cable you want into the unit, so you'll be able to charge pretty much whatever phone you have, which is nice. And there is an LED on the front of the unit which shows its status. Blue means the unit is currently in cleaning mode, and green means your phone is fully charged. And last but not least, there are unique acoustic outlets, aka holes, which are cut into the bottom of the unit, which will allow sound to pass through so you won't miss any alarms or notifications that may go off. And with that out of the way, the question on everyone's mind is, does it actually work? Well, Phone Soap and The Daily Planet both seem to think so. They went to a microbiology lab and made this video. I'm no scientist, but their results seemed a little bit too amazing, and although this is my personal non-professional opinion, uh, I wasn't a fan of a few things about their methodology. One, they sprayed pre-made bacteria on the phone and immediately went to cleansing it with a phone soap, or in the case of the control, immediately pressing against an agar plate. This process doesn't seem as real world as we would like with our testing. Two, they only left the phone in the phone soap for the four minute cycle that it takes to clean the phone, not the common way I would expect people to use it, which is an overnight cycle. Three, they claim you see results of the control test that was, had bacteria that was living on the phone, but it was just sprayed on the phone with a solution that was pre-created. All in all, it felt like the control test was just a result of exactly what was in the spray bottle. They may have well just sprayed the spray bottle di directly onto the agar. And again, I'm not a scientist, but letting different bacteria live on the phone for a prolonged period of time so that it has time to cultivate and grow like it would in the real world, especially in pockets and purses, which act almost like incubators, would make for a more realistic test than just a spray bottle. Their test didn't have much to do with the phone. They could have actually sprayed this solution on any non-biocidal object, and the results honestly would have been the same. So let's walk through the methodologies we used. We actually decided to do it a second time because we were worried when our initial results conflicted with the Daily Planet. The first test was with two separate HTC One M8s, which I cleaned off with an alcohol solution. Then I used both of them the exact same way doing the exact same thing for two days. I then put one phone in the phone soap and left it on the table and left the other one on the table beside it for a total of eight hours, after which I let the cultures grow in agar for a little over a week. 
The results were inconclusive with all the plates looking more or less the same. And we were concerned that using two different phones and letting the plates cultivate for too long may have both affected our results. The second test was done with one phone, an iPhone 4. I ran this through a worst case scenario by intentionally not taking care of it the way I normally do, as I'm actually quite anal about the cleanliness of my phone. Pun intended. I prepared agar plates and then swabbed the phone before putting it in phone soap charger, as I first put four plates in our wor warm server room to cultivate. After eight hours, I swabbed the now phone soaped phone and did the same thing. About four days later, it takes longer because we don't have an incubator, I first took the control samples out and filmed an examination of them, and then eight hours later, I took the phone soap samples out and filmed an examination of them as well, doing the exact same procedure. To be clear, once again, we're not scientists, and we'd totally love to hear your feedback on our methodology, and we're not specifically calling out the Daily Planet. We just thought this thing was pretty cool, so we bought it for an unboxing ages ago, but since we don't do unboxings anymore, we ended up having to actually review it. I don't actually think there's anything inherently wrong with Daily Planet's testing methodology, and it is likely more technically correct than ours is. I just prefer more real-world testing scenario when testing something that I will actually use in the real world. This is the same reason why we do gaming benchmarks by actually playing the game instead of using a canned benchmark. In the end, the results were not as good as I was hoping after watching the other video, but it did have a repeatable, measurable, positive effect. In one case, it actually left the plate very, if not perfectly clean, but it did leave things behind in our three other scenarios. Another thing to note is that we are not in a lab, so the control group isn't perfect, meaning that all the agar plates didn't have the exact same bacteria or the exact same amount of bacteria in them. But that doesn't change the fact that the phone soap still didn't cleanse whatever that bacteria was off the phone, and this bacteria is what came out of the phone soap. So as far as I can tell, if you want something that can mostly clean your phone, then the phone soap is it. But it may not be the 100% effective solution that the Daily Planet showed in their video. And it also won't help the fact that your pocket is essentially an incubator and you are growing cultures throughout the day while you use your phone. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and on the forum. Don't forget to like this video, dislike this video, subscribe, and share this video to everyone because it's super interesting. Also, if you want to buy a shirt, check out the link in the description below. We've got a few interesting things and I think there might be... Nope, the Highlander shirt sold out by now, so you missed it. But if you want to catch all the rest of our shirts on sale, be sure to check that link out. And if you don't like advertisements, I know a ton of you don't, become a forum contributor because it gets rid of all of them on the forum. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.